So today's video, we're gonna cover the cost of living in Boca Raton. We're talking housing for purchase, for rent, insurance, transportation, gas, food, healthcare, you name it. We're gonna cover it all in this video. We're getting after it right now. Hey, this is Andy Mandel. I'm a broker associate and team lead of the Mandel team at Remax Advisors. And in this channel, we cover everything there is to know about living in Boca Raton. So if you're thinking about moving to Boca Raton or anywhere in South Florida, make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the little bell icon so you get notified every time we make a video. Honestly, we get so many calls, texts, and emails from people all over the country and all over the world looking to move to South Florida, and we absolutely love it. So if you're thinking about making a move, if it's even in the back of your head, give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email. You can even send a smoke signal or carrier pigeon. However you want to communicate, if you're moving to South Florida, we got your back. So Boca Raton is relatively expensive for housing. So we are 21% more expensive than the median cost of housing in the United States. Boca is an affluent suburb. Housing just is a little bit more expensive here. So in Boca, we have a lot of senior communities, 55 and over, and we got a lot of country clubs. So if we exclude those for a second, the median price for a single family house in Boca Raton in 2019 was 465,000. For condos and townhouses, it was 265,000. Housing here is a little higher than the national average because we have 300,000 people moving to Florida every single year. There's only so much land down here. If you look at a map of Broward and Palm Beach counties, most of the county is out west, and that's all swamplands. It's all Everglades. You can't build there. So we have a limited amount of land. It does increase the pricing for housing down here. If you're moving to Boca and you're looking for a 55 and over community, if you want a single family house in 2019, the median price was about 268,000. Now, if you were looking for a condo in a 55 and over community, you're in luck because the median price is only 125,000. So you can save some money if you're looking to buy a condo in a 55 and over community. So let's talk about homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance is very expensive in South Florida. We do have hurricanes. We've been very lucky over the last 10 years or so not to get any terrible, terrible hurricanes on the East Coast of Florida. But you know we're right in the path of a lot of hurricanes, so our insurance does tend to be a lot more expensive than what you would see just about anywhere else in the country. For a median-priced home, you're looking at an annual insurance cost of roughly 3,500 bucks, not including flood insurance if you need flood insurance. So. Uh, that's a big shock to a lot of people coming down here is that insurance is so much more expensive. Uh, that's part of living in South Florida. We got hurricanes, nothing we can do about it. If you think you might be saving some money on rent, you might be wrong there. Rents are still expensive in South Florida. The median rent for a one bedroom apartment in Boca was $1,200. For a two bedroom, it was $1,650. The median rent for a three bedroom home was $2,450. And for a four bedroom home, it was almost $3,300 a month. So rent's still very expensive. Down here in Boca, if you can afford the down payment, buying is a lot cheaper of an option than rent. Rents have gone through the roof over the last couple of years. So buying still is a better option for you if you can afford a, a decent down payment. So one of the great things about Florida is that we don't have a state income tax here. So unlike California, Illinois, New York, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, states like that, you got no state income tax. That's a huge savings every single year on your taxes. We do have a sales tax though. So in Broward and Palm Beach counties, the sales tax is 7%. So it, things are gonna be about 7% more expensive than the sticker price on anything. But the state uses that money for schools, for roads, all sorts of stuff like that. They're constantly making improvements for the over 300,000 people a year who are moving to the state of Florida, making us the number one growing state in the country. Uh, so they are using that money for a good cause. So let's talk about transportation. South Florida is infamous for not having a ton of public transportation options. So there's not a lot of trains and buses and things like that that you would see in a big metro like maybe New York City. So you're gonna have to have a car down here. So obviously your car payment's gonna be depending on what type of car you wanna get. Uh, but our insurance for automobiles uh, tends to be a little bit expensive here too. Got some bad drivers. Uh, insurance rates in South Florida are a little bit higher than the national average. Good news is they just announced that the Virgin Trains, which is the, the train owned by Richard Branson's company, Virgin Atlantic, uh, they run a high-speed train with stops in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach, and they're building another stop up at the Orlando airport that should be ready in a couple of years. Uh, that's a high-speed train, so you can get from Miami to Fort Lauderdale in about 30 minutes, Fort Lauderdale to West Palm Beach in another 30 minutes, 
and then the whole leg from what from Orlando to Miami is supposed to take about three three and a half hours so that should clean up some congestion on the highways for people who are commuting from let's say Fort Lauderdale to Miami but the great news as of December of 2019 in Boca they just announced that they are going to build a virgin train stop in downtown Boca so it's going to make it so much more convenient if you live in Boca and you need to commute to work to either West Palm Beach Fort Lauderdale or Miami you won't have to get in your car that is a brand new announcement that's super super exciting because we don't have public transportation you're going to need to fill that car with gas unless you got an electric car so as of the recording of this video in the beginning of 2020, gas is around 260, 270 a gallon. If you're watching this uh, sometime in the future and you're curious what gas prices are, leave a comment on this video. I'm happy to let you know what gas prices are whenever you're interested in that. So healthcare, the cost of healthcare is about the same. It's, it's average for, in Florida and in Boca for anywhere else in the country. So you're not gonna pay significantly more or significantly less for healthcare down here in Boca. So let's talk about food costs. The average price at a, a good but nothing crazy expensive restaurant is about $18 a meal here in Boca. Our food costs in Boca are about 10% higher than the national average. I'm not really sure why that is, but our food costs tend to be a little bit more expensive than the national average. In Boca, we got a ton of restaurants from lower end chains all the way up to very nice high end restaurants. It's a great restaurant scene, lots of cuisines from all over the world. So if you love food, Boca is definitely a good place for you. Now, South Florida has a lot of cities on a map that kind of bleed together. It's almost hard to determine when some of these cities stop and where some of them you know, begin. Uh, but let's look at a map. We can see some of the more inexpensive and more expensive suburbs here in South Florida in and around Boca Raton. So Boca Raton basically stretches from the beach all the way out west to basically the turnpike. All the areas that are you know, in southwest Boca and then all the way west of the turnpike those are in unincorporated Palm Beach County. So while the address still is Boca, it's part, technically part of unincorporated Boca Raton, not part of the city proper. There's different utilities, different police, uh, stuff like that. But for all intents and purposes, people do still consider it Boca and the address still is Boca when you were to send a letter in the mail or something like that. It's still Boca Raton, just unincorporated. So in West Boca, you tend to see a lot of you know, slightly newer homes, typically built in the 80s and 90s, uh, but you see them typically in gated communities or with somewhat higher HOAs. Now there's obviously a couple areas that don't necessarily have the HOAs, but typically out west, you're seeing more HOAs, slightly newer homes, slightly bigger lots, and you do tend to get more bang for your buck because you're farther out west. Uh, so if you're looking to get an, a little bit newer home and a little bit less money, out west tends to be the area where most people choose. Now, if we look at the different areas, Boca is about 15 minutes or so from Parkland. Uh, it's right near Coral Springs. Those are both good suburbs that are, are similar to Boca Raton. So a lot of people who are looking in Boca are also looking in Parkland, where there's also excellent schools. Coral Springs as well. The price tends to be somewhat lower, but it's still a very nice area. And a lot of people consider that as uh, an option instead of Boca. If you go a little bit north of Boca, you'll see Delray Beach. There's a lot of 55 and over communities in Delray Beach, but it's also very, very nice. You have Atlantic Avenue where there's tons of shops and restaurants and bars and things to do at night. Uh, it's a great area. So you're only about a 25-ish minute drive from Boca if you're going down 95 to get to Fort Lauderdale where you can get to the Fort Lauderdale International Airport, Port Everglades where a lot of cruises fly out of. Uh, and there's also Las Olas, tons of restaurants, shops, bars, stuff like that. A lot more nightlife in Fort Lauderdale compared to Boca. Uh, so it's only a quick 20, 25 minute drive down I-95. So that's it for this video. Like I said, my name is Andy Mandel. I'm a broker associate at Remax here. If you're even thinking about making a move to South Florida, we would love to help you with that. We get tons of calls, texts, and emails all the time from people who watch these videos planning on making a move down here, and we would love to help you too. So give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, reach out however you want. We would love to be there for you. We are your guide to South Florida. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video.